My mom is Japanese. Yay, Japanese people from the Midwest, yay. Now my mom gave me a pep talk before I came here. She's very supportive of my goals and dreams and all that. You know, you could be movie star. Not quite Harry Berry type of movie star. Maybe, maybe you be friends. We didn't friend in movie nobody like. <laughs> so all focus go back to Harry Berry. <laughs> or maybe, maybe you be extra. Extra in pivotal restaurant scene behind Harry Berry. Way behind Harry Berry. You know, so when I go to a movie with my friend Peggy and she said, look at the pretty clouds in the back of that restaurant scene, I said, no. That is my daughter. <laughs> the other hair. Or maybe, maybe you're not in movie at all. Maybe you be catering staff. And then feed Harry Berry. <laughs> feed her. Yeah. No. I always talk about my mom and my set, and people are always like, oh, what about your dad? My, my parents met when uh, my father was in the military. You know. And uh, I don't know, their marriage just didn't really work out. So when I grew up, uh, when I was growing up, I thought my father was the Loch Ness Monster. Because other than a few blurry photos, a couple of random sightings, you really didn't know he existed. <laughs> yeah. But you know, my father, true story, true story, and I'll end with this, true story. Like uh, when 9-11 happened, my father thought it was his duty to go re-enlist go back into the army and do his part to fight terrorism. So he went over to Iraq and he was part of a, of a convoy that was hit by uh, an IED. True story. An IED is an uh, improvised explosive device. Terrorists, they put these, uh, they're basically bombs. They're booby trapped. They pack them with shrapnel and they do a lot of damage. So he was part of this convoy and he was like, he had these horrible, horrible injuries. So my mom said, you know what, let's, let's bury the hatchet, let's, let's go over, let's go over to your father's house, let's tell him how much we appreciate his service to this country, we'll bring over a bunt cake, <laughs> we'll do that. So we go over to my father's house and he's sitting there in the corner and he was injured, like he had lost an eye, lost use of his arm, and I was like, wow, that's my father. My mom looks at him. Oh, look at you. Mr. Soldier, go over, fight for the country. And now you only have one arm. <laughs> only one arm to touch the other women with. <laughs> I remember that one time in 1984, we went to the barbecue over Peggy house and you said you really wanted potato salad. <laughs> Go get it, it's very delicious and creamy. She uses a lot of mayonnaise, it's delicious. <laughs> and you go and it takes an inordinate amount of time and I look over there and there you are rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and I say, you know I'm Japanese, I don't have the rubbing. <laughs> but now you only have one arm to rub with. And now you only have one eye. Only one eye to look at the other women. You know there's something. If I was over in Iraq and I saw that boom boom IED go off and see your eyeball fly in the air, like that spaghetti meatball song, I would have gone into the street and picked up your one eyeball. And then put it in a glass jar and then on my mantelpiece. <laughs> Look everybody, here's the one eyeball of my ex-husband. Bun cake. <laughs> Thank you so much, I'm Red Thompson.